Text to video is finally becoming a reality. Some of the things that I've been seeing get created by people who are using text to video are absolutely incredible. So I'm gonna show you two different products. One is closed source and it's really impressive. The other is a brand new open source project that you can run on your local computer or Google Colab. I'm gonna show you all of these, let's go. So first is Runway ML's Gen 2 product. Gen 2 has been in the works for a while. It's had a private beta for a while, but now anybody can use it. It's free, but you are limited in the number of seconds of video that you can generate. So let's try it out. I'm gonna say ducks on a lake. Generate. Now you can see up in this corner, I now have 82 seconds of video left. And it says each second of video generation uses five credits and you have 410 credits left. Gen 2 is definitely on the cutting edge of text to video and does outperform everything else. And here we go, it's done. So each video is about four to five seconds. Let's play it. I mean, that looks pretty good. There's not a lot of movement, but it certainly looks very accurate. This duck looks like it has two heads. But overall, for text to video, which is in its earliest stages, this is impressive. So play around with this. You can get this at runwayml.com. It's free. I think you get new credits every month, but after that, you do have to pay for it. And for the pricing, it's $12 per editor per month. You get upscale resolution. You get to remove their watermarks. You get shorter wait times and 125 seconds of generated video every month. It may not sound like a lot, but the amount of processing power it takes to make these videos is substantial. And you'll see that shortly when I run it on my local machine. Next is an open source text of video project by Potat One. And I'll drop all of the links to these things in the description below. So this is the Hugging Face page. And if we scroll to the bottom, we could go to their GitHub page. And on their GitHub page, they give us a bunch of different Google Colab versions that use different text to video libraries. I'm gonna use the Zero Scope V1.1 text to video Colab. So here it is, I already started running it. The first thing you need to do is just click this play button and that's gonna install all the libraries that you need and also clone the two repos. It really could not be easier. Then down here, this is where we're gonna start entering our prompt. So you can have prompt, I'm gonna say ducks on a lake, similar to Gen 2. No negative prompt, number of steps, 33, I'm gonna leave that. Guidance scale, 23 frames per second, I'm gonna leave that. And number of frames, 24. Now here's a big limitation. At 24 total frames and 30 frames per second, this is coming in at less than one second of video. You can certainly increase it, but what I've found is that if you increase it too much, first of all, you run out of memory on Google Colab. And second of all, the quality degrades really quickly. I'm still trying to figure out how to maintain the quality of videos that are longer because on my local machine, I can actually create longer videos because I have a pretty beefy GPU. So once I figure that out, I'll create an update video and I'll show you. But for now, let's run it. Push play and here we go. Now it's gonna give us a warning. That's okay, we can ignore that. And this does take a little while. And here you can actually see it running and processing each frame. And it says we're at about two seconds per IT. I think that means iteration, but I'm not sure. If, if you know, leave a comment in the description below and let me know. Okay, it's finished. You're gonna see this little check mark. Now to find the video that you just created, you wanna click this little folder icon on the left side, and then you're gonna to go to outputs, and then here it is. And I'm gonna right click and click download. I'm gonna save it to my desktop, and let's open it up and see how it looks. And there it is. So again, it's only one second of video. Let's have it on repeat now. It's pretty comparable to Gen 2, but you can't have very long videos, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Okay, next, I'm gonna show you how to get this running locally. I'm on a Windows machine, and I have an NVIDIA GPU, so that's what I'll be using. The first thing you're gonna need is Anaconda, and then that is Python version management. And it'll alleviate us of all those Python version and module version mismatch issues. And again, I know a lot of you struggle with that. I do too, so please use Anaconda. It makes things so much easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a folder called content. I'm gonna name it content too because I already have a content, but you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. From there, now we're gonna create our Conda environment. And we're gonna use Python version 3.10.11 which is what I have found works with all of these TensorFlow libraries and, and all the other machine learning and AI libraries that we need. And also it works with CUDA, hit enter. So it's giving me a warning. Do I wanna remove the existing environment? Yes, I do. You probably won't see that. Then it asked me to proceed if I wanna install all of these new packages. Yes, I do. And there we go. So then I'm gonna highlight this line and we're gonna activate our Conda environment with Conda activate my env. 
hit enter. And there we could see my env. Next, I'm going to make sure we have all of the torch libraries necessary to run this. So I'm going to say conda install PyTorch, torch vision, torch audio. We may not need torch audio, but I included it because I had that text to audio library that I was working with as well. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. All of these scripts, all of these commands will be in a link in the description below. And I'm going to confirm, yes, I want all of these installed. All right, there it's finished. The next thing we're going to do is clone the two repos that we need to get this running. First, we're going to clone the text to video fine tuning library, hit enter, and it's done. Next, we're going to actually clone the model. And this is git clone, and we're going to grab it from hugging face. Okay, that's done. That took a little while. Next, we're going to change directory into the text to video fine tuning folder. And then from there, we're going to run pip install dash r requirements.txt. And that's going to install all the modules that we need for these scripts. Okay, that finished. So one thing I want to do before I run the inference script is make sure that I have CUDA installed and it's working. And I want to run this little checker script that makes sure that we have the right version of Torch and CUDA and that CUDA is available. So I'm going to write Python checker.py. And there we go. It gives me the version and that it is true and available. All right. And the last thing we have to do is run the inference file. So it's Python inference.py. And then we pass it in a bunch of different variables. And we want to make sure that we enter all the correct paths to the model and the repo. So to do that, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna right click on it, and we're gonna say, copy as path. And that'll go in this first command where it says dash M. So I'm just gonna paste it in there. And next we need the output folder, and that's gonna be right here already. And I'm gonna just make sure that this outputs folder is created. So I go into here, and there's no outputs folder, so I'm just gonna create new, and then call it outputs. And now it should work, enter, and there we go it's working. And if we look at our monitor, we can see that the GPU is running it and that's it. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So we go to the outputs folder and there it is ducks on a lake. And I think this looks really good. The only problem is it's only one second. Now we can start to increase it. But what I've found is that if we increase it past two seconds of video, we really start to see a severe degradation in the quality. I jumped into the discord of this project. And that's because they said the models are trained on one to two second videos. And that makes a lot of sense. They're working on this problem right now. And in fact, they gave me a suggestion of a new model I should try that model can be found right here. And so I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to try it out. If I get it working, I'll create another video on how to do that. But now let me show you one more about what it looks like at 48 frames. So we change that last parameter to 48. We hit enter and there it goes. It's running. All right, it's finished. Let's take a look at what that one looks like now. So here's the second one and this is two seconds now. So it still looks pretty good. Now let me show you what happens when we move it up to three seconds. Okay, it's done. Let's take a look. So here it is. It actually still looks pretty decent, but you can tell the ducks are starting to pop in and out of nowhere. And then once we increase it from here, we're gonna see a complete degradation of the video quality, but they're working on it. And the progress is so exciting. So hopefully you get this working. If you need any help, jump in my Discord. I'm happy to help out. Also, jump in Cam and Duru's Discord. They'll help you out as well. There's a bunch of different models that you can try for text to video, and some of them are gonna do better than others. But this is great progress and completely local and open source. If you like this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.